There's a couple things I'd like to mention before I go into the subject of today's video. Just to clarify my intentions and thoughts behind what I want to discuss. I want to clarify that I'm not really here to bully you, any creator or anything like that, and neither am I trying to arbitrate what anyone can and cannot draw or create. I mean, I'm not really in a position to do that anyway, and obviously I do believe in creative freedom, that you shouldn't really let anyone tell you something should or should not be created, or that you shouldn't draw something. Of course, unless it breaks any sort of human rights laws or whatever, you know. I mean, it's a pretty easy thing to abide by, if you ask me. But I am going to be critical of drawings and ideas here, because I really want to help people like maybe you with their own creations and drawings by taking a look at woke comic book art, as well as uh, woke comic book characters, I suppose. This is a subject that has just kept cropping up over and over in the last few years. Like, it just seems to never end with the stuff that the media puts out and the comic industry just, you know, pu pushes out for everyone to laugh at. Every few months something new just crops up, you know. So I kind of wanted to pick apart as many of these things as I can find for you and explain what you can learn from their mistakes and what you can learn from the things they do right if they do anything right. I'm a bit of a brainlet when it comes to comics. I don't read them. I don't think I'm old enough to have been around them when they were popular. But I do like some of the characters and stories on showing them. So my knowledge of themes, art styles, writers and all that is very limited. I've done my best to research, but if I do make any mistakes, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Be much appreciated. Before I go into the first subject, I also want to describe what I think woke means. And that is, it kind of, the if you put a label of woke onto something like, you know, comic books, as I'm doing here, that would be a, uh, a comic book that kind of follows with the current political mainstream trends. I, I might mention body positivity in this video. You probably know the term, or at least have heard the term, and it just means like PC, politically correct. Uh, and I know there's a whole of a lot more than just uh, comics about it. I know there's a whole wing of politics and all that nonsense, and I'm not going to be talking about that because, to be honest, I'd need like a dictionary or something, or I'd, I'd need a, like a two hour long video to go into every single little detail about that. So I'm just focusing on how it's affected comics and the art of comics. It doesn't mean if a character is transsexual or gay or lesbian, that doesn't make them woke, but it's the way they're presented and how much effort has gone into the rest of the piece that kind of makes the character woke. Anyway, onto the first subject I want to talk about, the New Warriors. The New Warriors were a sort of group of Marvel superheroes, I guess not dissimilar to like the Avengers or the Fan Four Stick 4 I guess, but you don't hear of them these days. Or at least we didn't hear of them right up until the 17th of March 2020 when the New Warriors returned, mentoring a group of new recruits for the team. Likely you've seen these guys already, but just in case, first here we've got Snowflake and Safe Space. They're twins. One of them chucks snowflake shaped ninja star things, the other can project only shields onto other people, which is dumb. Next is Trailblazer. Has a magic bag that does things. Then we got Screen Time. He's got immediate access to the internet, like you and me, interestingly. And lastly is that. Be negative. So that's who the old New Warriors scooped up. That's them. Budget Cut Sub-Zero, Hugbox Man, Door of the World Devourer, Ben 10, and a fucking Edgelord. Let's look at Snowflake <laughs> and Safe Space a little closer. The first thing I want to say is that their names are terrible, obviously, because they're pretty much just insults. Literally, that's why the designer gave them these names. The guy who designed all of these dudes, Daniel Kibblesmith, put a lot of emphasis onto their names and to what they mean and for some reason decided that it'd be a good idea to call two of his main characters insults for some reason he says he did this to like fight the labels that are put on millennials or whatever these days so like the these heroes adopted them well it hasn't really worked out in the real world because it just kind of made things worse didn't it but other than that i'm really fucking bored by these designs. It's fairly obvious that, um, oh, I should have got his name up, Luciano Vecchio was just told to stick with the first design. What you're supposed to do in these sort of situations is, in design is come up with a bunch of interesting ideas and sketches, some of which will get carried over into the subsequent final ideas and drafts, and others won't. But can you imagine what these guys would have looked like on the first draft? Well, you can, because you're fucking looking at it. This is obviously the first draft. They didn't bother doing anything else with these dudes. So they're like, the idea was twins matching outfits. One is blue, the other is pink. Let's make it so it's not the corresponding gender. That's very creative. Ha ha, he he ho ho. 
which is, you know, it's not very good. It just, it hasn't worked. I, don't, I have no idea what was going through their mind. As well, they don't really give us any idea as to what their personality may be like. Shouldn't a design really reflect what the character is and who they are? Uh, but to be fair, saying that, I mean, their personalities aren't very great either. I mean, I know we aren't supposed to know everything about these guys from the four-minute teaser we were shown, and the link for that is in the description. But still, you know what I mean? All we know about Snowflake... It's <laughs> Snowflake. All we know about her is that she uses pronouns. Like, not... Uh, she's obviously a woman, so she uses... Um, she doesn't use she, her. She uses they, them, for some reason. I don't know why. So she's not a she, she's a they, I think. Um, well, I'm not going to remember that, so moving on. I'm just going to call her a woman. Moving on, what else about her? Um... Oh, wait, no, there is nothing about her, because you didn't get told anything else. Okay, what about space? safe space? Okay, all we really know about him is he's supposed to be a kind of jock. Like, you know, the stereotypical high school jock kind of character. Not with a haircut like that, he's not. Something I do like about these two, if I could find anything at all, is that their combat style that Kibble Smith has given them is supposed to play nicely off of each other. She's the aggressive attacker while he's, like, the defensive. Which is a cool idea, but again, their design should reflect this, but they don't, especially since you have no good ideas with them. If I never told you that she was the aggro and he was the defense, you would have never guessed. Also, stop with the incestness. It's not good. Stop it. Now, what do we do with these guys? What do we take from them? Well, okay, let's start with safe space. The idea that he can only project shields onto other characters is quite silly because well he becomes immediately a target you can just snipe him in the face you know and he's done because he can't defend himself but if you must have that as his sort of ability why not give him like a big shield for personal use like a riot shield also see what i mean like a concept like this is oh yeah you think of it but then you think deeply into it and you bump into troubles like the artist has because look what he's doing in these photos if he can't use them himself what the hell's he doing here he's what's he doing and obviously I don't need to mention give him a better name because safe space is just terrible. Call him like Fortress or something. But like, you know, I mean, Fortress is still quite a defensive sounding name. You know what you're getting into with a character called that, right? Right, okay, what about Snowflake? Well, first give her a better name. Easy, done, Frostbite. Fantastic, sorted. Uh, what else? Okay, so if we're going to give her the power to throw ninja star things made of ice, maybe she could be kind of like a ninja in a fighting way obviously she's not going to be able to just do that and then nothing else she, maybe she needs to fight maybe she fights like a ninja maybe she's maybe slightly dressed like a ninja you know uh, see how easy this is it, it takes me three seconds to come up with that it's i i beyond it's just uh, why did you not bother i did kind of want to do my own version of them i didn't want it to be like look at my artwork here that i've redrawn safe space and snowflake haven't i made them a lot better because no i'm not interested in drawing these guys better because i just don't really like the characters i'll be honest if i were to just follow what the artist and the designer has come up with i did come up with some sort of designs for them like alternate designs simply by using the facts that i have been given for them so like snowflake is okay if she's supposed to be some kind of ninja uh, with the Shrunikans thing. Maybe she obviously fights like one as well, like I mentioned. Maybe she's dressed more in like Arctic style clothing if she's sort of a cryomancer. If she's like a cryomancer, maybe she dresses in that sort of way. She's got like a mask that resembles maybe like a ski goggles or, you know, maybe she keeps her face concealed. Maybe she's got that, um, that big puffy jacket thing. Like maybe that you know that kind of resembles winter cold clothing she could use them but without the sleeves on if she wanted to look more you know intimidating and you know scary yeah okay so that's a little bit for her what else did i do for her i give her these sort of like you know armored boots in a way obviously she's more the aggressive type so she would be in less armor but more comfortable clothing that'd be easy to move around in, like a ninja right okay now that we've done snowflake and you wanted to take those sort of design ideas and keep them similar to her now you can give safe space that sort of style mask with the you know ski goggle look um and give him the sort of similar armor but with him okay so you obviously want to keep these guys similar because the twins i get it so safe space could be similar but with more armor because he's a defensive kind of dude right it, you can tell that they're supposed to be twins still and you can tell what they're supposed to do by looking at them and I don't want to say that's the be-all, end-all for design. You know, a subversion is fine, and you don't have to design them that way. But if you're going to give us nothing else, give us that, right? 
Okay, so next is on to screen time. He's not as badly designed as the previous two. Again, it's just inspired. It's like they stuck with one thing and they didn't bother experimenting or trying to change it. However, it's not as bad as what they call his backstory. So when he was like a kid, or like a baby or something, I don't really know, he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. So, you know, let that sink in. Sounds like his granddad should have been on some sort of list somewhere. He's also got that terrible name thing going for him, but I mean, at least it's not an insult this time, it's just a term. But this gas somehow has patched him into the internet itself, so he has like instant access. Uh, I've looked through his abilities that on this article thing I've li linked below. So he can see augmented reality, he can see real-time maps, and can instantly Google, trace mark, any fact. But I mean, good thing though, when Thanos comes to collect the Infinity Stones, I mean, screen time will be able to suggest a new cafe just down the road. Again, maybe I need to see him put his ability to good use in a comic or something. But I still think he could have had a lot more potential. You could do such a lot of interesting things with a dude who is potentially data, right? The guys who designed him went with a very simple, he's half man, half data or slash machine like Cyborg from DC, and that's fine. Wouldn't it be more interesting if he was maybe like data itself, right? So his attacks were more based on like, he needs to be quite smart with technology and in a more electrical and technological environment, he has the upper hand because he is data. So maybe he's like not an apparition, but some sort of projection. He can like maybe project himself from something and that's the only way you can see him. Anyway, obviously give him a cooler name, maybe something like terabyte, which sounds like it's got that edge to it and still has the technological feel, but like, with the idea that he is some sort of data kind of being. You could do some way more cool fight scenes with these guys. Maybe things that DC or Marvel hasn't done before. So like, in a, if you were to pitch him against a bunch of dudes, he might not be able to take them all out himself. But what he could do is, you know, potentially play with the lights or distracting distraction with noises, turning on appliances, and even to the extreme of like, you know, cutting out electric, uh, electrocution maybe or one I thought of was it obviously all vehicles are electric these days he could probably turn on a vehicle and just drive it straight through some fucker's house wouldn't that be cool and he could maybe like make blockades with vehicles as well really quick like to prevent enemies from going down streets or cutting off ways they could go you see what I mean like maybe I'm not even coming up with the best idea for him I'm a brainlet here like I'm not the comic designer I'm just saying you know there's so many things you could do with a something new right and he'd still have weaknesses like you know EMPs and he wouldn't be very useful in a desert, and he wouldn't be very good if, I don't know, the enemies didn't use any electrical technology. But you see what I mean? You can do a lot of interesting things with this guy, other than he can show people maps, and he can find cafes nearby, and he can look at, he can find up facts. No, that's boring. How are you going to defeat enemies with that? Now for being negative, and already I'm taking 20 points off for using a pun in your name. It's not clever. I mean, I know I've said in the past that names are important in first impressions, and I do still stand by that. They are. But nobody is going to be afraid of anyone with the name like B Negative or Screen Time or Snowflake. Like, come on now. You know, Snowflake, it's not scary. It doesn't evoke any kind of fear in a baddie or whatever, you know. Snowflake, say, what are you, what are you doing? Anyway, back to Goth Skrillex. Again, I'm bored by his design. It literally must have took Luciano like five minutes to design each of these characters. Whenever you design a character or a thing, you should probably spend more than five minutes designing them. If you want it to be taken seriously anyway. Especially if you're in the industry like these guys, like this dude and whoever has drawn these where I keep forgetting his name. So this guy's got a leather biker jacket, red mohawk, white spandex trousers, black boots, some bits under his arms and done, done, fine, done. Sure, I guess it reflects his personality of being a goth kid, edgy, negative kid. Uh, excuse me, but how does that help him in any way fighting crime? No, this is not how it works. But B Negative is a vampire, he has vampiric abilities, but they're not particularly explained if they're anything beyond what we normally know about vampires. Like, I don't know if he slashes bad guys' throats and then it drains them of blood or whatever, or does he eat their necks or something? I mean, that would be quite graphic from what these characters look like, so I guess not, but we don't know. And again, I know this teaser isn't supposed to tell us any everything but we don't even get anything with these dudes we just get they're fighting culture by using the name safe space like it's dumb i don't know how many times i have to keep saying that give him a better and more intimidating name again like 
pure blood or something like that. I don't know, something vampire. Uh, I mean, that still ties into his powers, right? I know B negative ties into his attitude and, oh, it's a blood type, it's a pun. But pure blood still has that kind of pun sort of thing, I suppose. And it's still kind of cool, at least if you ask me. Would it be a more interesting idea with this guy that his body had a strange and complicated reaction to the vampire blood he was given when he was a child? Uh, that's his origin story. He was given, well, he needed a blood transfusion and he was given the blood of a vampire. He becomes a vampire. Apparently that's how that works. But maybe if you were to go down that route, maybe his body kind of slightly rejected that blood transfusion. So he can't consume blood to sustain like his bloodlust hunger as vampires have or whatever, you know. So he has to be assisted by some sort of system on his gauntlets that feeds blood into him. I mean, again, that gives you loads of ideas to draw and design and take influence and be inspired and create from, right? Now you've got like, okay, so he, maybe he needs assistance with this blood intake thing. We can design systems and tubes and design all sorts of fucking things for this dude. Okay, maybe the system could be utilized in a way like Venom for Bane from DC. Like he can dose himself with more blood for more energy and strength with the risk of becoming more careless about collateral damage and civilian safety. See, these ideas are all coming together now and they're all sort of forming a thing. Again, maybe these are rubbish, but then you'd have someone else going, oh yeah, but then maybe this or maybe that, right? It's, it's not hard. Well, it is hard, apparently. <laughs> right, and lastly, we got Trailblazer. <laughs> I don't know if I can actually describe <laughs> how bad how bad this is like it's beyond like impressive i'm gonna have to go off script because i'm gonna keep laughing because i can't really read this without taking it seriously hang on a minute let me get a photo up i need to look at this okay so like i said the others did look quite boring and just not interesting enough like they didn't put any time into designing them but Fucking hell, man. They must have put nothing into this woman. At least the other guys kind of look like rubbish superheroes. What is what is she wearing? The, it's not a superhero outfit. It's just... It's like a chav outfit with lights on it. I, I'm just baffled. I get that's the point, though. Like, she's been thrown into being a superhero quite quickly. But even by civilian clothing standards, it's just terrible like there, there's too many colors she so obviously sticks out from the team seriously like look at the covers she's been on whenever the artist has tried to use the character's main colors in like a creative way like the images you're seeing now they're fo they're forced to just use all of dora's colors because that you can't choose one she's got like 50 all the other characters follow the same rule of colors except her like main color white gray black but trailblazer has too many you can't stick to one brilliant and whenever i see her drawn it just looks so poorly done like they've deliberately made her like overweight and given her strange proportions it's actually quite insulting i feel deeply offended by this i don't want to seem rude or anything but this body type just doesn't evoke any kind of superhero macho to me i mean we haven't even got to her fucking power yet you know what i mean Gee. so like the bag she's got she inherited it from a relation i think uh, I can't remember. I, I, I have watched these videos about a thousand times and I still don't remember what, you know. Anyway, all we are told in the four minute preview is that it's some divine bag and it's magical in ways. But that's it. I had to go out of my way to find what it does. And as far as I know, it has nigh infinite space inside. So you can pull out random and useful objects with it. Right. Yeah, okay. And the reason she's a part of the team is because she bumped into one of the OG new warriors and helped them out. You know, I'm, I'm trying my hardest not to be rude, but like, come on. I've got a bag. I can put stuff in it. I can pull stuff out of it. I can run into battle first. The entire reason she's called Trailblazer. I bet I'd be faster than her as well. Where's my fucking application form? I didn't even draw anything for Trailblazer because I'm just, there's such little to go off with her. But first thing I can really mention is less colors or make the amount of colors you've used work with each other. Easy. I think she could, uh, I mean, uh, again, not to be rude, but I don't think she should be, ha she should have this body type. It's really silly and it just doesn't evoke macho you need, right? I, I, again, I, I understand, well, I don't understand the whole inclusivity about weight thing. If you're a superhero, there's the word super in it for a reason. Super, superhero. Anyway. I couldn't think of what to draw, but maybe she could She could just be an ordinary civilian with life aspirations and goals and wants nothing to do with the new warriors. But maybe this magic bag only works with her or something. She couldn't pass it to one of the other members. So she should have to choose between what's right and her own life and goals. So, like, is it right to 
stick with your family and friends and work on your own life, or is it right to save others in the superhero world uh, and work for the greater good? So then you've got like a moral argument there with her. She's like the moral one. What is truly right to do in this situation? Should you focus on your family or should you focus on the greater good of the whole world? Isn't that more interesting than a girl who's clearly already a good person? You know, that's what Kimball Smith said. Clearly already a good person just doing more good things. You know what I mean? It's more interesting if she's conflicted. You know, is there a selfish desire to just be you over the desire to help people? It gets you thinking. But I didn't draw anything on her because... Look at it. So yeah, that's all I've really got to say about the new warriors. Except a little bit more I'll mention later in the conclusion. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go on to the next thing. A young adult comic called I Am Not Starfire. Starfire being the character from Teen Titans, I believe. I don't really watch any show like that, but I believe that's where she's from. As well as her younger daughter named Mandy, um, who's like, doesn't have any superpowers compared to her when she does. I don't even know what stuff I does. Does she fly or something? I'm not sure. But Mandy, this <laughs> Tumblr avatar down here, doesn't have any powers at all. I think the most important thing about this comic, particularly to me, is the cover. Let's look more closely. No part of this I believe, is drawn very well. Mandy looks like she should get that hand checked out for late stage arthritis. And she doesn't look like a teenager here, which is what I'm pretty sure she is in this comic. I haven't read it. Again, probably should, but I don't know. I don't think I'm ready to start spending money on something like this, you know. <laughs> I probably should, but uh, she looks more middle-aged than teenagery here. Like, something about... I know she's been drawn as, like, very unflatteringly big. Um, stout, I think is the word. But it's so un yeah, it's so unflattering. Like she looks stretched almost. There's something really, really off and unnatural about this position. She she is I know she's a teenager, but she doesn't look like a teenager. So she just looks really short and it looks so kind of wrong. Like they really are trying to insult the actual character and insult the people who are interested in the character. I don't know if Mandy is an existing character that they've just thrown this label onto. Like, is she called Nightstar or something? Um maybe, I don't know. But it, it's terrible. Like, I know uh, it's obvious that you can see, like, her lip as well. Looks like she's sort of having it tugged by a piece of string up to her one of her eyes. Yeah, it's not particularly drawn very well. Looks like they've just tried to make the fact that she's big and short as funny as possible. And that's not really what you want to do with your characters, right? Like, also, something else I don't like about the front cover is it's just kind of in your face. It's like this sparkly green writing and black writing and purple writing with this strange, slightly gradiented background with nothing on it. It was just two characters just smacked in the middle. It doesn't look particularly good for something that's supposed to be published. Despite that, there's something I think is quite a bit bigger than the actual quality of the actual front cover, and that's the theme of the front cover. What the front cover is trying to tell us. And what it's trying to tell us is just kind of wrong, I think. So, like, I know the old adage is don't judge a book by its cover. And sure, I do agree with that, but give me a good reason to read the fucking book in the first place. I don't think the cover does a very good job of giving us a reason to like or sympathise with this Mandy character. From what I can gather from the comic pages, she's like a downtrodden youth who's trying to find who she is. So we're supposed to feel bad for this Mandy character because she hasn't found her way in life. She's a troubled teenager at school. She seems to have like image problems, like, you know, body image problems. And from what I can gather anyway, and she isn't quite content with who she is just yet. And she doesn't really know who she is or what she wants to be at this stage in life as a teenager and I'm sure we've all been there. This front cover doesn't really give us any reason to feel sorry for her because look at the way she's acting around her mum I suppose. Uh, I just want to show you another piece of this comic next to this one. Compare these two images. So the first one I'm not Starfire, the actual cover, gives us the impression that this Mandy character is quite rebellious, quite against her mum's orders, she's quite confident, she's looking angry at something, and she's looking like, you know, she doesn't need anyone, she knows who she is, she's she's just an angry teenager, she doesn't want to be talked to. But then you look at this new one, where you've got this really nice contrast between warm colours of, uh, I guess, Starfire's bedroom or room or something, and then of Mandy's room. You've got that sort of clashing feeling as well, with these colours comes feelings. This image tells you a lot more. Instead of being quite snarky, quite rebellious, it's really introverted, it's really quiet, it's really sympathetic. Why is she upset? Why is it the way she looks? What is she thinking right now? This image, or something similar to this image, probably would have been a lot better to put as the front cover, I think, because no no longer is she, she this, like, unrespectable person who does not need any, any help from any whatever. She's kind of like feeling weakness, I suppose. And I just think this is a really nice actual comic 
paid it's pretty good it's like i don't know if there's any actual dialogue for it or if it is just blank but it's really good i quite like it and i think they probably should have used something like this for the actual front cover instead of something more mean-spirited do i really think this could have saved the comic well no i just uh, no I, I don't think it's kind of comic book reader material the reason i don't think this comic works is mostly because of its art style actually the art style i'm not going to say it is bad because it isn't it's fleshed out it's quite good it's quite colorful it pops i can see it having its place in a medium more kid friendly if i dare say that so let me show you this part of the uh, page i don't really know what's going on or besides they're fighting some dudes so you got starfire here who's flying in space apparently she can do that <clears throat> and i recognize more of the teen titans there like raven i think is her name and they're fighting something okay but doesn't this look like it belongs in a children's illustration book so it's all pastel it's not very shaded it's all nice and glitzy you got that character down there who looks like yeah a, a, like a children's comic book character who looks over eccentrically happy all the colours mixing together, it's really nice. I can't say that it's a bad drawing. Again, they've missed their audience. They haven't really paid enough attention to the audience they wanted to attract. But you've got to put in the effort, right? You've got to really pay attention to the audience you you want to get. And not so much if you're just some person in their bedroom who just wants to learn how to draw comic book characters or a character. Sure. Okay, so onto the segment I'm going to call Captain Americas. There's been like a comic about multiple Captain Americas, I think. Um, and there's a couple I want to go through. So let's do that. So at first I thought this guy was kind of like an anarchy kind of Captain America, so yeah, Captain Anarchist I guess, which is a dumb name but I'm sure he'd have a better one, which would be obviously like the opposite of what Captain America stands for in terms of like laws and stuff. Um, and I thought that was kind of interesting at first. Maybe he believes in doing the right thing, like helping the innocent and all that, but doesn't believe in government intervention and general law, seeing everything like corruption maybe. I mean, I don't like his design here. I think it's a bit silly and a bit, like, stringy. It's, why has he got a neck thing? I don't know. But I could get behind the idea. It's like an alternative universe Captain America or something. He's drawn fine as well. I just don't really like his design. But then I saw how the media was peddling the fact that he was, like, a gay Captain America. And I guess that's fine. I don't really see anything wrong with that. And I don't really think many people would have had an issue with that. But is it really the most important thing to push forward about your new character? The stuff I just said earlier seems a million more times interesting than the fact that he's gay. I just don't get it. Maybe it's not the character's fault, but instead the way the media peddled it. Using the fact to try and annoy people and try to draw the right attention from Twitter and stuff. Get some nice clicks and all that stuff, right? See, look at this image. It's the first gay Captain America. And then, you know, because apparently that's important. Apparently the fact that he sleeps with other blokes is more important than the fact that he can be a good character, which obviously is not true. So yeah, the image. Marvel to introduce first LGBTQ Captain America this year, right? But is that the most important thing about this dude? Isn't the way what he stands for more important than who he sleeps with? Isn't the way he's drawn and the way he thinks and speaks and acts and the good things or the bad things he does, aren't they more important than who he prefers? I've heard that he may be like a Robin Hood type of Captain America, like looking out for the homeless and destitute found around railways and stuff. He is, as you can see down there, the Captain America of the railways, which isn't a great name, but whatever, it's better than gay Captain America Antichrist, um, um, which is fine. I just don't think woke 2020 style politics need to be injected into his distribution. His design, though, does actually work for the whole railway thing. Like his outfit looks like cobbled together from what you'd find in an environment like an underground railway. He's rough, improvised, some thought went into this. Again, I'm not a fan of the design, but I at least understand the thought process behind it. But yeah, again, I don't think the issue is with the fact that he is gay, is the problem many people had with him. It's the way it was just pushed in your face. Like, I don't really care about that. I'm more sure, I guess, by way of finding out in the comics, you could just find out, you know, just by dialogue or something. But does it really need to be just pushed as the fact that makes him so great is the fact that he's gay? Nobody cares. We just want to see what, he, what he's good at and what he believes in. And then we'll figure out what he sleeps with later and I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. So this guy, again, first impressions, this guy was just handled really incorrectly, I think. Yeah, so I assume this is like Captain American Indian, I, I guess. Um... <sighs> It's fucking ridiculous. I guess he's drawn fine. Like, the actual quality is... There isn't much wrong with it. But all of what he's wearing seems really, really impractical. And a tiny bit racist as well. Should I be looking at this? 
Anyway, in practicality, all those sort of baggy trousers and flared fluffy bits, like those are going to be going all over the place when you run. Like it's all over his chest and over his legs. And I don't know, I'm not really feeling it. It just looks really out of place for a hero. Like, again, not to be judgmental towards this kind of attire and this kind of style of clothing, but it does look like he kind of walked out of a parade, doesn't it? Like, um, what is that thing on his head? Did he just walk out of a casino or something? I know it's supposed to be feathers with the Captain America A on it, but it looks really silly. I, ca I can't deny it looks quite out of place. I would, I'd probably laugh seeing this rundown to save me from under a car being crushed. Um, anyway, it's like the designer used lots of references of very outlandish and extravagant outfits for this sort of festival and this sort of culture and did nothing to turn them into like a practical, cool and useful outfit with this kind of flair to it. This almost seems like something you'd see at some sort of celebration of the cap, like a festival. At least with the last one you could kind of understand that he was looking out for the absolute destitute bottom rung of society, but who is he looking out for? I mean, I know chuck Captain America somewhere where isn't America, he's not going to just hang up the shield and watch people die, sure, but, you know, he's a product of his time and it's just a matter of fact that he stayed with us for all the years, so... Why is this guy being made? When there's uh, the most important thing to take from Captain America Indian, I guess, Joe Gomez, is if you're going to pull from references, do it in a constructive way. Well, of course, you, you know, it depends what you're making, I suppose. But if you're making characters that are supposed to be taken somewhat seriously and, you know, don't go over the top like this. Think about what the guy is trying to do. He's not a, a circus festival thing. He's a superhero. He's supposed to be saving people. So what does all these weird tassel feathers and baggy trouser things do for him? What do those brown shoes do for him when he's trying to beat up a hoodlum? So, yeah, try and remember them things when you're taking references from something like feathers and tassels. You've got to be careful with what you're using or you'll end up making something silly like this. Okay, I'm going to call this segment body types because I'm not entirely sure it falls into the category of like a Captain America or an entire comic like Starfire and the New Warriors. Uh, so I'm just going to call it body types. Uh, and first thing I want to talk about is this Wonder Woman cover. I, I believe it's a cover for a comic, but it's like an alternate one. And I'm going to go into more detail over it later in the conclusion because I have a lot more to say about the potential message it sends. But I think this one's just not very well drawn particularly. It's all out of correct proportion. You know what I mean? Like... Look at the size of everything here. I understand I'm not the greatest at drawing human figures. You know, I'm, I've had my failings. I have to practice still. I'm not perfect at it. You know, I, I confess to that. But it seems deliberately drawn to be this sort of uncaring antithesis of power and muscle. Which is what Wonder Woman is supposed to be. She's fucking Wonder Woman, right? She's supposed to be this, like, demigod. Or god, even. God-like muscular structure of, you know, the, the peak of human capability and then beyond. It seems deliberately the antithesis of that. Like, she's frumpy she's out of proportion her legs are bigger than her head she's like i don't know why her skin's blue maybe she should get that checked out but like looks like, again like they're deliberately trying to be insulting to her is this a movement just trying to be insulting to the characters you're creating it's weird i'm not understanding it i guess the background and style is fine kind of fitting for the name of the comic 1984 but come on Treat Wonder Woman better than that. Why is she wearing ripped jeans? Okay, I don't know anything about She-Hulk besides the fact that something about her used to confuse me. I assume She-Hulk got her powers the same way the regular Incredible Hulk did, the big green monster. I was always confused as to why the comic artists made her just an athletic woman rather than the raging monster it made the Hulk. I assume they got their powers the same way, I don't know. Uh, but it always used to confuse me as to why it did that to each character. Well, recently I figured out <laughs> why. Because otherwise she'd look like that. And isn't it a sight? Yeah. Um, so, doesn't look like a woman really. Uh, just looks like a bloke with some bigger lips and long hair. Um, it's, I guess it's fine drawn. It looks like a comic. So, yeah, I think she looked a lot better with a more regular attractive i mean you could have easily made this more womanly like her jaw jesus christ i wish i had a jaw like that bloody hell and a, look at her chin <laughs> look at it oh christ now there's another one here as well i've just forgot my fucking god look at that what a state women are talking gee indeed they are <laughs> what a mess that is but yeah that's why they looked so different and it did work this is what i meant by body types when i well, obviously 
the original She-Hulk was quite an attractive looking woman and as are a lot of comic characters male or female. I don't know what this thing about making everything ugly is. It's really confusing. I guess it's the thing we're in with the most now but why? I really don't understand. Why have we got to make all of our beloved characters ugly? And here's another one I found. It was um, I don't know what comic it's from um, but it's Captain Marvel and look at her face. Like I don't know if it's the actual, um, how good the artist is at drawing these things. But, like, her nose is massive. She's got this weird, ugly, grainy black outline. And her mouth is weirdly huge and stretched, and her face is all oblong, and her eyebrows are all out of shape. What is this obsession with making a character ugly? Even the other character, look at her fucking jaw and nose. It looks like a man. Maybe that's what it is. It's like changing all women to look like men and all men to look like women. I don't know, it's a weird, it's very strange. But yeah, that's something I noticed and I just think, you know, draw her more like a woman. It's a hard one because I don't want to sit here and think all oh, women in comics should look the same. No, I, no, I think people would get bored of that. But do you really have to be insulting to your characters to make them look different and unique? And ladies and gentlemen, hold on to something because I've saved sort of the best thing I've deliberately not looked at these photos just so I can get a more well I've deliberately tried to limit myself from looking at these photos to get a more pure reaction for this video but this is Faith which I had no idea existed until I was doing some research for this video and I guess you could just describe her as a body positivity superhero and it looks absolutely ridiculous. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd be quite scared if that came towards me at the speed of sound. <laughs> I just scrolled. <laughs> I just scrolled to the one where she's like smirking and she's flying with the fist like the Superman. She's got the sun behind her. Um, yeah, oh my Christ. Right, okay. Um, what to say about this one? Well, um... Again, people exist that are fat, obviously. It's not a thing, you know, you don't call it out in the street. That makes you a bit of a dick. You don't insult people for that sort of thing. I believe in being positive about, you know, making yourself the better person that you can be and living life the way you want to live it. But is this correct? Well, obviously the answer is no. But is this the best we can do? A fat, obese superhero called Faith. I don't know if... Anyone who is on the bigger side wants to have characters like this in the comic. I imagine not. But the argument, I guess, would be, you know, we, um, I guess the argument would be we need, we need more body representation in our comic books. We need, you know, we need people, who, we need women who don't really look all that womanly. We need big women. We need fat men. We need, we need big women. We need women who don't look like women. Women who look like men. We need small women. We need tall women. And, and men as well, obviously. And yeah, that does sound fine in principle with like short and tall and maybe not the most attractive women. But I think there's a difference between making your woman not look like sexually attractive and then not making, or man, and then not making the character ugly, right? I don't know why you want to make your characters ugly in a comic book. I just, I really don't understand that. Is it like a rebellion? Do we need to see average looking people in our comics? Is that why people buy comics? And then for the whole weight and the weight thing with Faith trailblazer and what's her name mandy from nights the night star comic not Night Star, the starfire comic fucking hell is there no boundary to becoming a superhero anymore do we all have to be superheroes I, I, like i want to be as delicate as i can when i say this but it's not really virtuous to be that size again so if you know if you're watching and you are that size you know it's your life at the end of the day but it's not a virtuous thing it's not something we should be imposing onto very Influ very easily influence young adults and children because I assume well like the I'm not Starfire comic that looks like it was for a child I don't know if we should be imposing the whole you're perfect the way you are thing onto um onto our onto young people and it doesn't get anyone anywhere in life it makes it sound very nice for a split second like when I show my work off or I don't know something like that I don't want to be lauded as perfect I want to improve myself I don't want to be told I am amazing the way I am because that's how complacency starts to set in, doesn't it? You are perfect the way you are and there's nothing wrong with you. Are nice? Oh yeah, they're nice things to say to people on the offhand and they have their uses in certain situations but there's nothing there. It's vacuous. I mean, for one, it's not true. I kind of see it as unfair to repeat to someone. 
particularly referring to the younger generation, should we really be showing people who they are? It's like Faith and Trailblazer and all that. Or instead, who they could be. And that's what I get from comics like Faith, the characters like Faith and Trailblazer. It seems an attempt to push the fact that we are all good the way we are and you're already superhero, which you're not, really. Unless you're pretty exceptional, which Faith isn't. I don't even know what she does. I don't even know what she's doing in these photos. Uh, it's just too ridiculous for me to get interested. Uh, anyway, I know that turned into a bit of a TED talk back there, but I don't know. I just kind of get the impression that this cannot go anywhere good. Jesus Christ. Right, back to what you can learn from these things in an art and design sense. I guess you can call this the conclusion. So to conclude, the new Warriors and the new Captain Americas represent laziness to me. They prove that when you try to cut out too many corners in design and creativity and rely entirely on current cultural standards and movements to hold your characters up, you just set yourself to fail, really. I Am Not Starfire represents a missed audience. In the industry, or with an already established audience, you do have standards and styles to abide by, and missing them and changing them can lead to, uh, well, I Am Not Starfire. The likes of the Wonder Woman cover, the voided She-Hulk, Faith, and the strange, ugly, drawn characters that I've shown you, and even like Trailblazer and I'm Not Starfire again, they kind of represent a strange movement in the comic industry. Not much you can really take from in um, in your own work. If you, if you want to draw stuff like that, go ahead. But it represents a strange movement. Now, I know comics have gone through movements and ages and all that, and I'm, I'm aware of this. They haven't all been the same and similar. And they've had their ups and downs, and they've had comics that haven't landed quite well, and, you know, things that we wouldn't perhaps produce today. We're going through that again, I think. But this time, it's impacted by the current political movements of a certain side. It's... I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's very good. I, I don't see how this can be seen as, like, a, gr a good age for comics. I mean, haven't, aren't they doing really shit? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they're in the bin right now, especially with Koof. They represent a strange movement in the direction of a way of politics. So, um, yeah, I guess if you can take anything from that last point, do. But otherwise, you know, don't, don't do that. Thanks very much for watching. I can appreciate that it was probably a very long video and maybe it was kind of arduous to get through. And I probably did waffle quite a bit, but I think I think I needed to go into quite a bit of detail to get across my points there because there's a lot to unpack with all this. And it doesn't really even stop with what I've just mentioned here. There's probably so much more I've missed, but because I'm not interested in comics, I just didn't see it. But thanks for watching. I, it was a fucking long video and, um, you know, if you watched it to the end, good on you. I go wash your ears out now i'm sure my voice is quite grating but i hope you can also learn something from that if you intended to learn anything from that also here's a piece of art i did i i need i needed to put a you know a, a good work of mine here and i didn't have anything else and this doesn't have any relation to the video i just thought you should see it because you know i should actually i'm an artist i should probably put a drawing of mine that's decent um somewhere in the video so i guess i'll put it here anyway i guess i'll see you next time let me get comfy in this fucking squeaky chair.